They say nearly 400,000 spectators showed up in 1937 to watch the Avis Rennen, an open Grand Prix style race near Berlin, Germany at the Avis Circuit. The Avis Circuit first started holding Grand Prix racing in the 1920s and held the German Grand Prix on and off throughout the 1920s and 1930s. The circuit itself really was a proving ground in the early days for speed. It's literally a highway section that the cars travel down in a straight line for 10 kilometers or 6 miles or so do a turn and then come back the other direction. In the early days, it was absolutely one of the quickest tracks in the world, and being that motorsport was really a way to test cars and reliability, it was a great place to race. But by the 1930s, other circuits started popping up, such as Tripoli and the Nordschleife, and the circuit itself at Avis had really lost some of its luster. So the circuit was closed down for the 1936 season with one motive in mind, let's make the quickest circuit in the world. The Germans wanted to reclaim the quickest Grand Prix cars, the quickest circuits from the Italians, and so a massive banked corner was constructed on the north side of the circuit, known affectionately as the Wall of Death. This massive banked corner was constructed entirely out of brickwork and is banked at 43 degrees, which, to put it in perspective, that's over 10 degrees higher than Daytona Speedway. So when it was announced there would be an open Grand Prix race in 1937 around this high banked circuit, everyone knew speeds were going to be high. Mercedes and Auto Union were the two main competitors for Grand Prix racing in Germany in the 1930s and both developed special streamlined bodywork versions of their cars for this race in particular. The Auto Union Type C is one of the best pre-war Grand Prix cars available for Assetto Corsa, but recently the streamlined version has become available as well, and this is essentially the same car just with streamlined bodywork on top of it. Taking a look at it, they just essentially covered every inch of the car with as smooth as metal as they could to get the air to flow over it nice and smooth, and the Mercedes team with the W125 did the same thing, although they had some issues with the wheel covers actually causing the car to lift going down the straightaways and so for the race they removed those. So both Mercedes and Auto Union entered some streamlined and non-streamlined cars into the races here. I think there were a couple Maseratis as well but it really was an all-German show just to put on a show to see how fast German cars could go in a straight line and they could go really really fast. These things topped out at over 240 miles an hour which is nearly 400 kilometers an hour as fast as a modern day Indy car hits on the straightaways at Indianapolis but in 1937. If you think about that for a second, this is crazy. They raced with open cockpits, leather or cloth helmets down these highways that just had exposed poles and different objects on the side of the road, going 240 miles an hour with everything on the line. So the race itself was a pretty huge success. They were worried about the tires wearing and blowing uh, because of the high speeds, and tire wear actually was a big issue in 1937. So it was run in in the case of a couple heats and then a finale race. Uh, And in the finale, Herman Lang won that race at an average speed of 171 miles an hour, which stood as the fastest average lap speed over a course of a race until I think 1985 at the Indianapolis 500. So an absolute high point as far as technology goes with racing uh, in the 1930s, and it was quite a number of years before this type of performance was matched. We all know it happened right after 1937, of course, but it's still a very interesting thing to read about and just to see the technology that was in place at this time. So because the car is available for a set of Corsa, I wanted to try to take this out on the track and I've assembled a shortish grid, which represents pretty much what ran uh, at the 1937 Avis Renin. Uh, We've got a few 125s, unfortunately, no streamlined version. Uh, We have three, I'll be driving one of them, but three of the streamlined Auto Union Cs. Then I have a couple of the non-streamlined version as well, which also ran. So I'm going to do three laps around the circuit. Um, It's a very interesting or not interesting circuit, depending on how you look at it. So I think three laps would be a sweet spot. It's a pretty long lap anyway. But let's get started with this. Let's see if I can hold on for three laps around Avis in the 1937 streamlined Auto Union Type C. All right, so here we are at the back of the all silver grid, short grid of cars. Lights are up. Out, we're underway. 
smoke from the cars in front will just slowly ease off the line. Oh, getting squeezed in the middle there. These cars are geared to go ultra fast, so they're not graceful off the line, but there we go. Picking up speed. Trying to see if the non slipstream.union here pulls out in front. Able to do so. We're actually a little slower right off the line in the slipstream cars just because they're a bit heavier, but once we get going, get up to third gear here, we should obviously be quicker. Oh, my compatriot there pulling in front of me. I'll let him squeeze up there, follow him past the non slipstream version. You can see him side by side. Get up to fourth gear then. Top gear, hitting 200 miles an hour as we head down the circuit, basically on a public highway, or that's really what it is. Come through a gentle right-hander there. It's all flat out and straight. We'll come up on this non-slipstream Honda Union, switch lanes with them. Pretty sure you're not supposed to pass on the right side, but make an exception here. And this is pretty much Avis. It's flat out. It's a little scary passing cars. There's some bumps here and there you gotta be careful for, but ultimately it's just hold that pedal down and go. However, it's punctuated by two very sketchy sections. We're coming up on the first one now, which is the South Curve, or the Sudschleife, as it was called. And it's just so hard to get these cars slowed down, so I really need to make sure I hit that braking zone. I'm just looking for a hay bale. There it is on the right side. And right as I get to that, I want to basically stomp on the brakes, get the gears down. All right, there we go, down to third gear. Get it down to second. You hear the tires lock up as I try to squeeze on the brakes down to first. Whoa, oh, just slow it down. There we go. Just guide the car around. Whoa, almost a lazy spin there. Everybody's quite slow. Now get back on the accelerator. <laughs> Dab a smoke in front from the Mercedes. Slipping the gear a little bit there, but now back on the north, or headed north. Oh, all right. So the corners at each end of the circuit are worth the price of admission just to, or worth, I guess, your pay to be able to get through in these cars. These cars are tricky enough on a normal type of circuit where you've got to corner and brake a lot, but when you're used to just going flat out and you're over 200 miles an hour, it's so hard to get them slowed down enough. We'll head up the north side now, and it's actually a bit faster on this side, I think, just because we're headed downhill, maybe. Not able to quite hit that 240, though, that these cars were claimed to have hit in the real race. 221 miles an hour, that's plenty fast. It looks like I'm gaining on the group in front. We'll come through this little bit of a left-hander, but more importantly, this hill here, which is a little sketchy. Bounce over that. The car does love to understeer at a high speed. All right, in the slipstream, though, of the 125s. Unfortunately, they don't have that slipstream bodywork. We'll pass one of them. We're coming up. I can see the garages on the left, and that's pretty much my braking zone, or braking marker for the northern turn. All right, get it down to third gear. Ugh, try not to lock up the brakes and just guide it on through. Sketchy right-hander. Don't want to run wide there, but now come to the wall of death. And I don't want to enter this at much more than 120 miles an hour, I've found. Oh, even then, just over the lines, they thankfully painted to guide you. Oh, there we go. Back on to the south side of the circuit. Complete the first lap. I think I'm up to second already. Not too bad. And I think I'm chasing Rossemeyer, who unfortunately lost his life. He was one of the stars of the German racing scene. I talked to him about him a little bit. Oh, and Fiagioli crashing out there. Or retiring, at least. Get up to fourth gear. Rossemeyer, the car in front of me, he was one of the stars of the German racing scene throughout the 1930s. And he actually had something to do with this race being canceled for 1938, amongst other things. But he uh, died in a testing accident trying to hit an ultra top speed. I think in a car very similar to this. And it put a little bit of a damper on the whole program. So I'll see if I can catch him, but we'll come down to the south curve again and 
just really can't help break myself. There's not a lot you can do if you find yourself braking too late. It's the easiest way to get into trouble with these cars. 205 miles an hour though, alone. In 1937, it's insane speed. All right, I can see the trees coming up in the middle. So just look out for that hay bale on the right side. And there they are. You can just see them now. Right at the first one. Just can't break my own rules. Down to third gear. Hopefully down to second before this right-hander. Just slow the car down. Oh, locking the brakes so much. Would not be good for the tires. Ooh, got an almost lazy spin there. Well, there we go. Rossemeyer kicking up a little smoke as he gets back on the accelerator. The AI are very good at accelerating these cars. Luckily, didn't have to play around with them too much to get them to slow down, but I love how you can see the cars coming towards you on the other side. Oh, and Herman Lang out of the race. So, the real winner out of the race as well. Not many cars left then. I think we started with eight. All right, up to fourth gear then, headed north. And I can just see Rossemeyer. I don't know if he'll be on the video. Overall, this version of Avos is it's not too bad. I think it was originally made for R Factor, and it's been converted, of course, like like the car as well, uh, to a set of Corsa. And it's and it's all right. It's showing its age. I think the biggest problem is it doesn't have the same atmosphere. I think this race had in 1937. It was. You look at some pictures of it, and I recommend googling Avos Renin 1937. The crowds are insane, and they're everywhere. I don't think on this section, but especially around the uh, north curve, the death wall, the crowds are just so deep. And honestly, you don't see anything like that today. I mean, even Indianapolis doesn't really come close in just how that looks. All right, I can see the garages there on the left, though, so that's where I'm going to start slowing down a little bit. Just don't go too fast. Pitch the car in. <laughs> Pretty good there through that right-hander. Almost scare myself every time I go through there. But now on to the big north curve. Oh, the brick's bumpy. Luckily, modeled into the sim. Ross Meyer kicking up some smoke. So we'll come to the line, start the final lap. I think I'm a little closer now. So one lap to go. We got Crashiola behind me. Nine seconds though, so plenty, plenty not to worry about behind. All right, up to fourth. And this circuit was actually raced after 1937. There's some shots of Formula One cars going around that corner in the 50s. Uh, so it was revisited after the war and everything, which is quite cool. But this was really the pinnacle of the whole German engineering thing leading up to the Second World War and how the government was just pumping money into these car manufacturers to build just cars that demonstrated how powerful Germany was. And I talked about it in the Donington 1937 Grand Prix video I did, but these cars were just so much more advanced than anything that the Italians or the British were turning out. And even if these cars, exact cars, raced in the 1950 F1 season, you know, some almost 15 years later, they still would have been competitive, if not quicker. All right, we'll come towards the south curve, though. Love this weather pattern, too. The sun dips in and out of the clouds. Makes it tricky to see at some stages. Getting very dark now, but here we go. Here's a hay bale. Just jump on the brakes. Nose dips down a bit. Get it down to second gear before I turn off. And this part of the circuit is one of the most different, I think, from pictures. Oh, locking up the brakes there. Let's try to get back on that throttle as soon as I can without spinning the car out. <laughs> Just catching the oversteer. Yeah, I don't know 
know if I'll have it in the cards to catch Rossemeyer. He's just a little quicker in a straight line, and there's not enough corners for me to out-turn <laughs> out him. But that corner especially, I see pictures from it, and there's basically a carnival going on alongside the circuit. And you also see spectators just right up on the edge of the tarmac. There are some of the auto unions down the left side there. Very cool. A couple more. But the spectators are just lining the circuit and they're not, no safety, <laughs> nothing separating the cars from them. Pretty wild times for many reasons. But cool to experience even a little bit. about doing this a while back when I was first looking at these 1937 cars and I'm glad I waited for one of the slipstream ones to come out. I hope more 30s type cars come out for a set of Corsa and other Sims really. It's a really cool era of technology and kind of the cars are hard to drive so a lot of folks don't quite relate to them or they'll take them out for a quick spin because they look cool but then can't, can't handle it. But if you learn the quirks, they're quite rewarding to drive. Um, up to the garages there on the left, so that's where I'll brake. Just jump off the accelerator, down to third gear, just lightly on the brakes. Any more than half application and the car will lock up. Get on the throttle a little earlier than you think you can, but now into the death wall one last time. You can see Rossemeyer in front of me there. So I'm not able to catch Rossemeyer, but not a bad person to come in second to. Oh, a little bit of power slide there out of the north curve. So not the most exciting circuit to race in a sim, but crazy stuff to read about, just the events surrounding and how the auto manufacturers built these specific cars for this event, and cool to experience it a little bit in a sim just to see what it was all about. I love this era of motorsport, like I was saying, and the more I read about the 1930s with racing, it's just so interesting what was going on at the time in the world and what car manufacturers and things were doing to uh, turn out the quickest cars when the automobile really wasn't that old overall. So hope you enjoyed this. It'd be fun to do a little more exploration this time period. I want to see what other circuits and stories are out there for me to uncover, but that's all for this one. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all again next time.